All right, so now we need to talk about faults as far as like IO faults and stuff like that, right? So system, our support equipment faulting. Uh, this would be our IO tree, our IO configuration. That way, if anything of that nature or like say, for instance, very important to our system to run or have the ability to run, we can understand exactly what's faulted, where to go, where to fix it. This would help troubleshoot as far as, you know, engineers, controls, um, controls, techs, uh, maintenance, or even operations can even find, easily find where the problem is. This is going to be, a, you know, basically using GSVs and pulling the information from each independent device. And then we're gonna go ahead and make an alarm for it. Now we're gonna come up into our general alarms. We don't have any alarms yet. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. So we'll zoom in, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get a GSV, right? And so what we need to do is go up to our top header, right? And then we go to the input output, and then we can get a, you have a message, you have a GSV, you have a SSV. So a GSV is the get systems value. The SSV is to set system value. We're going to do the GSV, pull it down. And again, we're monitoring, going to be monitoring the uh, Ethernet card, we're going to be monitoring the PowerFlex, uh, all of the IOs as far as that goes, uh, the inputs, the outputs, and stuff like that. All of the stuff that is pertinent to our system running. And again, we're just doing this to give a simple illustration of where to go. Now, you can get as complex and get as much information as you want to from this GSV. We're going to actually approach this in a simple, simple way so that you understand a very simple implementation of this, right? So what I mean by that is every instance of this, like say for instance, I come over here and I pick, uh, let's just go ahead and pick one, right? So let's go in here and do the class. And now in the class, you're gonna pick a module because we're going into our IO tree. So we're pointing to uh, the, pointing the GSV to the IO tree at that point. We're gonna pick our instance. And in this instance, I'm choosing the e ethernet card, which is the uh, 1756, E N B T, right? Now it's going to give the name of the actual device, the name of the device that we gave it, right? Which was batching Ethernet. And then we're going to come in here and get the actual attribute. Now, this is where I say things can get a little bit, um, you know, you can get as much data as you want to from this, uh, meaning you could get the entry status and then pull the entry status and come down and say, compare the entry status on different, different uh, codes and different uh, binary setups, right? To, to pull and, and find out inf different information about this. But each individual device gets a little bit more complex. What I'm going to show you and the way I'm going to show you simplifies this to work with 90% of devices so that you don't have any problems. This is gonna basically look for the fault code. So instead of saying the entry status or the fault info, we're gonna get the fault code. Then we're gonna come over here and make a destination tag and we're going to call this Ethernet Fault Code. And then let's put that, let's put a little uh, space between that. And then this will be a dent value. Uh, again, generally speaking, on a GSV, it comes up, uh, your default would be perfectly fine. Now, there are a few GSVs and things that you can do when you start getting into more complex things that need to be specified uh, in a certain uh, different uh, data type, if you would. Now, again, this can be a, this perfectly fine being a dent, right? A double integer. And again, you can always right click and go to instruction help and find out more about that. It's really, really, really simple. So right now our fault code is zero and we'll go ahead and accept that. And you're probably wondering to yourself, well, you know, okay, that's great. So we understand where we can get the data, right? Where we can pull the data, but what, what we still haven't derived a fault. We still haven't understand what we're doing. So this is where we can come in and actually add more logic to this and say, okay, well, if this right here that basically the destination of the gsv right and you don't have to keep it as you know in the same rung you can separate the rungs if you want to but i'm saying if it's not equal to zero right it's not equal to zero then fault or you can come in here and say the positive of that which would be uh if they're equal 
right? So in our essence, we could say, okay, well, if they're equal, we can say if the fault code is equaled to zero, then we can say, we can make a bit that says ethernet okay. So ethernet, ethernet module okay. And just like that, now we can come over here and paste that in there, or uh, assemble that. Now, so we're basically saying, okay, well, if this is equal, then it's it's good. Now, again, this is easily determined where we could obviously change that. That's why I like to hard code this, if you would. I like to, if I'm gonna use it a lot, then I like to make a, a constant value, right? But it, in this case, hard coding is perfectly fine. Now let's do another one real quick, and that way we, one we could test and show. So real quick, I'm going to add a new ROM. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to also just you can just type in GSV, simple just like that. It comes over here. We're going to get the PowerFlex this time. Okay, we're going to get the PowerFlex this time. Come over here. We're going to get the module. We're going to pick our PowerFlex, PowerFlex drive. Okay. And it comes up PowerFlex 5, 525 because I named it that, not because that is the device or whatever the case may be, it's because I named it that, right? So then we're gonna come over here, get the fault code, and we're gonna say right here, this is PowerFlex 5 fault. Yeah, we'll just say fault code, that's fine simple and it keeps it consistent with what we've been doing and I'm going to come over here throw this in here just like this just like we did above really 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 simple logic nothing complex at all um, so basically we'll come over here and zero so as long as they're equal we're going to grab a bit then come over here and grab a bit and we're going to say that the power flex 525 connection or we'll say okay all right in that instance now this does give us our status right so we'll come over here and assemble that and now we have both of these saying they're okay now we'll come in and put some text behind that but right now we need to come in and put these alarms in our system so in this instance, what we can do is say if, if it's not okay, then we're gonna produce an alarm, right? So in the in the alarming, so this would be in our alarm routine, right here, I clicked on the wrong one, sorry about that. We can actually skip down if we wanted to, if we wanted to separate these and say, okay, by the way, we wanna say uh, the IO monitoring is 50, and let's actually increase that. I'm sorry, increase that so you can see it better. So let's just say this is 50, and we'll do the first one at 50. Okay, so we'll switch back over here, and we'll just grab our ethernet, copy this, come over here, paste that in there, delete that, and then change this to a, a normally uh, closed like that. So basically saying uh, it's a XIC. And then we'll come over here, assemble that like it's okay. And then as soon as it's okay, you know, you'll indicate right here that it is faulted or it's not faulted, right? So what we're gonna do in, our, in this next one is we're going to grab our PowerFlex and we're gonna test these out too. So don't, don't you know, don't worry about that. We're gonna make sure that we test these out and make sure they work again testing in the environment you're, you're programming in is the most important thing you can do right so again we'll examine off okay so come over here and we have that now now again what we can do is we can pull we can actually just inhibit this right so if we wanted to we can just come over here and inhibit it um, and it it would come up and give well that's not necessarily a fault code well let's just pull this up real quick being that we did it so you can see the uh, indication of that we can also just pull the uh, what I'll do is I'll just pull the Ethernet to the actual uh, you know, uh, 
card or the actual power flex and we can show you that as well uh, but again we can inhibit this if we wanted to apply inhibit that inhibited it of course we're not pulling any information from this so it's not again it's inhibited right now so it's basically saying okay it's perfectly healthy so don't don't kind of confuse that with what's going on because when it comes down to it we won't actually show that and I, I wanted to show that for a reason but let's go ahead and put that back as a connection an active connection so inhibit means that you want to ignore it right now that it's back being used let's go ahead and pull the ethernet connection and you can see the fault did come up so we'll come over here to our alarms and you can see the fault code came in so we're just basically again using this very 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 simple we're not coming in here trying to classify or isolate which of the fault codes it is we're just merely saying that it is a fault now in this instance we're using 51 so we can come over here and use 51 um, and we'll just say 50 is the ethernet card 51 is the actual uh, power flex so we'll come over here to our ALMDs and let's just copy this copy and paste and paste and this is 50 right so this is 50 oh I'm sorry I need to put the zero in front of it so it knows who it is and this is 51 0 51 and let's pull these up so you can see that a little bit better apologize again for this because I, again I want to make sure that you can see it as good as pot as as easily as possible so uh, we'll go ahead and before we assemble let's, let's go ahead and change these right so let's change this to this will be 50 and this will be 51 okay and then we'll make this one a new yep digital alarm we'll make this one new digital alarm come over here put our information in here this would be a severity we could say this is a severity of 1000 because it's something we need right so we'll come over here and we'll say this is going to be our alarm I believe it was alarm let's see let's make sure we got that right let's, let's look at the other ones and make sure what we have I believe it's alarm text it is alarm text I thought it was alarm text I don't know why it's not populating there we go alarm text and then go to 51 or this would be 50 and then we'll put these in here just like this right so again populating this in here and then first we need to come over here back up here so let's see this is 50 and I change the severity so anytime you close out and you don't save it's gonna drop them it's gonna drop every, all your information out as you did so make sure you save so now we're putting the variable in there now we're having the variable and we'll hit apply that's good do the same thing over here so we'll come over here and change the severity and we'll just type in alarm text because that's what we had that's what we've been using come in here and get 51 we'll get 51 which is our alarm text and we'll put the alarm text in the message just like that and what we're going to do at this point is assemble the routine so, so far all we have, uh, everything we have, based upon what we've built already in our, our alarm structure, right? So now we have an alarm popped up. But if we were to come in here and test our alarms, so if I were to come over here to my alarm screen and test my alarms, it would pop up, but it's gonna pop up blank because it doesn't have any message in there yet. Now you may be thinking, well, well yeah, we just put the message in there, but we actually didn't. We don't have any text in there at, at this point. So what we'll do is we'll come back in here and this is 50, right? So we want to go to alarm text. Go up here. 
and then we'll go into our control tags so alarm text we're going to go into 50 so we'll go to 50 and 51 and we'll go to uh, right here so uh, this is B50 and this is going to be ether net card faulted and this one's going to be powerflex 525 drive faulted so this is a general illustration right here um, and then we'll say check I I O tree Okay, so that way we have a full indication of what to do. Kind of help, um, and then we'll do that on the same thing up here. So let's pop, pop this open again and grab this and kind of copy. And then go over here and paste it in. That way both of those show that. And this just lets the person know what to do right, whether it be an operator, technician, or engineer, whomever is troubleshooting it. All right, so we do have a fault, right? So we need to get the fault status back. What we can do is come over here. We have our Ethernet card fault. And let's go ahead and get the connection back. This way we can come into our system and reset it. So what I'll do is I'll pull up my header and just run it. And I can see I still have this in here, right? So I need to hit the reset button which is perfectly fine because I'm not going to run my client. I'm just going to hit the reset button, which is done on the footer. Global reset. So you can run both of these screens the way we made them. Let's do a reset. And this will work as soon as the connection comes back in. Okay, so the connection is good. Let's go back to our connection up here. So now we can do the acknowledge. All right, so now what I want to show you is doing the same thing, right? And I'm just showing you this. I'm not running the client, but I'm going to show you this will populate now and tell you the right alarm. So just like that, it shows you the I.O. fault. So now we have the program, and just, just like that, right? So if I get the connection back, it's not going to reset itself because we have to go in our program. Or if you remember how we have this all this done all right so this is staying latched in this bit staying latched in even though the alarm's gone the bit staying latched in until we reset it so until we come into here and we hit the reset button and then we it's gonna say okay it's reset now and then we want to come in here and hit the acknowledge button which you remember we did this with VBA code so you can go back and watch that video if you need to we want we did that with VBA code so I just want to show you in this video on how to actually come in and put a, a couple different indications of just monitoring your system IO really 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 simple logic really simple um, implementation but something very effective and very helpful for those that are troubleshooting and those that are helping and understand and, and make get the system back running right I mean that's really what it's about right monitoring everything you can making sure you pass that information on to give the person that's operating the most information they can or the person like a technician or or, some, or engineer of that nature to help troubleshoot as well right so combination of both uh, really makes it a really effective and a win-win situation for everybody so again hopefully that was really helpful and we'll see you guys on the next one